Hey, 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 good morning, everyone. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Preparation video for July 31st, 2019. So our last trading day in July, and my goodness, is it going to be a big one. First off, we have a tremendous number of earnings, over 350 companies, actually over 360 companies reporting earnings today. We have um, an economic calendar that has market moving events in it. And we have the FOMC this afternoon making a decision on rates. So what does that mean for the charts? Well, let's take a look. Um, yesterday we had a little bit of a disappointing day where the market gapped down and a little bit of frustration, I guess, in the market. And, um, oh, by the way, there's going to be something, uh, there's uh, news out that the uh, trade negotiations ended in after just half a day, uh, very, very sharply. And um, I think that's just going to be a blip on the radar screen today. No one's going to be paying attention to the fact that uh, negotiations broke down so quickly. Uh, this week with China because it's going to be overshadowed by all these earnings and the FOMC but you might want to keep that as a footnote um, who knows when the market might uh, come around and react to that uh, or if the president reacts and, and starts another uh, flurry of tweets on the subject and maybe even uh, threatening uh, more tariffs I don't know it's going to be an interesting thing as that evolves. But right now, it's all about the FOMC. All eyes of the world are focused on the FOMC. And as you can see, we slipped just a little bit lower yesterday. And if you remember, I suggested that I think we're going to be okay as long as we hold on to the tails. Those tails of that support. And boy, we just gripped on there really nicely um, by the end of the day, uh, rallying back up and holding on to uh, that support level. Now this morning on the back of Apple earnings, a um, little bit of happiness here in the market this morning and we're looking to gap up this morning. So moving back up, but I don't think we're going to have at least enough, at least at the open, enough bullish energy to really push us through that little downtrend here in the diamonds. So keep an eye on that little downtrend here in the diamonds. That's going to likely serve as our resistance point that we'll have to watch and consider. If those bulls find enough energy here in these earnings reports this morning, we could certainly pop on through and move on higher if of course those bears get disappointed for some reason um, we could see that um, push down through here and that would likely mean the test of these levels of support now i don't see that happening at least the first part of this morning uh, the bullish energy in the market seems to be pretty strong and growing as the morning goes along so i'm looking for more of that upside move at least uh for the opening gap um spy is still holding up very very well you know holding in its trend had a little bit of pullback yesterday but certainly holding on well holding on a little bit of a price support right through this area there's just a little tiny price support in here and this morning as you can see we're looking to gap up slightly in this market so um, S&P 500 has a lot clearer path to more record highs than that of the Dow. So a push up here this morning, we could lift us up in here and break through that resistance. Actually, wouldn't be too t difficult to do if we can find that bullish energy in the market and push us up. However, if if we fail, if, if um, we get... Um, what could be, you know, a morning gap up where we get a pop and drop. And that's where that market gaps up in the morning and then we find sellers. So if, if that were to occur, if we gap up and those sellers come in, pushing us back down, that could certainly create some concern, a little bit of fear in the market. And I think if we lose support right through here, we could see, um, you know, some serious ramifications for that testing these levels of support down in here and even down in here if that were to occur. So hopefully um, those bulls can um, continue to defend these support levels and hold things up. Let's take a look at the Qs. Qs um, also a little pullback 
and Q is really in a, a bit more of a precarious situation because we're not that far elevated from this breakout high that um, here in the market, but that does serve as a significant level of price support. So as long as those bulls stay happy, and this morning with the Apple news, we're gonna gap up uh, toward the high of the day yesterday looking pretty good let's just hope it's not a a pop and drop type uh, day heading into the fomc and we find more inspiration to move us higher and it wouldn't be all that hard to break out of that resistance area right there and move us into new record territory but once again if those bears decide to come around and uh, mess things up here we could certainly see some trouble if we start breaking down through these lows here and breaking into that next level of support. So watch that pretty carefully and closely today. IWM, I don't know what you say about it. It's, it's like it's become, uh, uh, it's the whipping boy, I guess. Yesterday, nice bullish engulfing candle. And finally, for the first time in quite some time, it looks like we're gonna get a follow through at the open, maybe just a little bit higher this morning at the open but watch this carefully we're just now trying to break that resistance to the upside and show some bullishness here in iwm but i gotta tell you it's just not a whole lot of confidence that we're actually going to get that done i really need to change this trend now because this is kind of matching up through here and our trend running up through here we need to hold on if we pull back in that chart but i gotta tell you iwm is just messy right now um, hopefully it can start participating with the overall market and get things moving but we'll have to wait and see it's not exactly a confidence maker here let's take a look at the vix now the vix showed a little bit of fear creeping into the market yesterday and even though we rallied up off of that low that fear kind of held on here now remember i've been talking about this downtrend and this downtrend continues to hold certainly in this market and with the market gapping up this morning i would expect that hold to continue uh, i would expect to see the fear drop back here in the market a little bit at least at the open we'll have to wait and see what happens as we move toward that fomc however just going to repeat this again i don't think real trouble in the market begins until we break that downtrend and prove to hold it as support whether we're here or above this little um, resistance area that's where the real trouble could begin so keep an eye on those levels in the VIX. Let's take a look at T2122. That four week new high, new low ratio. And yesterday's selling initially had T2122 down here, but we picked it right back up. Picked it right back up and pushed us right back up in this choppy pattern that we have going on here um in t2122 and with this gap up this morning that could start moving us back up here toward that bearish reversal zone where we're kind of stretching that rubber band up here now we've got plenty of room to move so don't get too worried about the you know the fact that if we reach up here that we're in imminent danger of uh, falling i don't think that is the case and we can even cross up through in here and bounce around up in here for a while but just know that we we could be reaching up here toward that bearish reversal zone and think about that um, as you plan your day forward let's take a look at our economic calendar today and our economic calendar has several things to move the market around first this morning here at 8 15 a.m eastern time we have the adp report adp is that precursor to that big employment situation number on friday so just kind of keep that in mind we're heading toward that big number here on friday so once we get through the fomc we still have big numbers that could move the market around for us so watch that closely we're not out of the woods yet um, then we have um, employment cost index both of these have the potential to move the market but honestly they're just not as impressive as they used to be um, ADP used to be a more reliable number than it is right now and um, 
So it, it's lost some of its energy in moving the market around. We have the Chicago PMI uh, today. Don't expect a whole lot of action around that. Obviously, the EIA Petroleum Status Report is going to be very important in how these oil sector stocks hold up. They had a nice rally yesterday, and we'll have to wait and see on that uh, petroleum status report. And then the Mac Daddy of the day, we've got the FOMC when Jerome Powell decides what he's going to do and hits his press conference here. We could see lots of price volatility as um, that news comes out. The entire world is watching this report, so it'll be interesting to see what happens after that news releases. So with that, we've got an awful lot going on today. We have a big day um, in the market. And I would expect some, um, as the morning earnings roll in, I would expect some uh, pretty substantial price volatility uh, during that morning rush. And I, I call that morning rush during that first 30 minutes of the day where Everybody's jostling around and all those earnings reports are rolling in and everybody's making adjustments as as those occur. Um, but then don't be too surprised if we see the market kind of just get quiet, soft, um, light and choppy as everyone waits in anticipation of that FOMC. So be careful um, with your uh, decisions today in trading. Um, remember, Anything we do around the FOMC is really kind of a gamble. It's not much more than that. So um, be really careful and be thoughtful of that. Remember, one of our big jobs as traders is to protect our capital. So with that, how about we look at some charts that could be setting up trades that are looking pretty good. Well, first off, I'm going to mention Apple here. Apple had this really nice trending pattern gapping substantially higher this morning, gapping over this last high um, in uh, May. And I wouldn't want to chase that this morning. But um, obviously, Apple staying healthy and strong in any rest, pullback, or consolidation after that gap up open could be an opportunity to enter that trade. A couple of trades coming up out of bottoms that I really kind of like. Um, my favorite right now is KSS. KSS is in what we call a rounded bottom breakout pattern. That's where we have this really oversold condition in the short term. All of those prices moving averages and everything start to round higher. And we just have this beautiful pattern in KSS holding up very, very well, looking very strong, like the look of that chart. And um, I think this has a more upside opportunity in it. Take a look at CentOS. CentOS, beautiful price consolidation after gapping on earnings. No one wants to sell this. We'll wanna keep an eye on this chart. Uh, to see if this can actually pop through. And you can see it popped my alert here yesterday, if that can continue to follow through to the upside. And don't be too surprised if this needs just even more consolidation. Um, you see I've got this marked out as a channel. It is entirely possible that this could kind of just kind of slide sideways all the way over into here before it moves. So watch that carefully. Um, CentOS still considerably a beautiful chart and uh, setting up well. Microsoft, I think, is still looking very, very good as a chart. And those tech earnings continuing to come in strong could certainly um, help Microsoft continue to move up. So Microsoft is one that I would be keeping an eye on past its earnings, pushing higher, really good results overall in that chart. If you guys remember, I've been talking about restoration hardware over and over and over um, in these morning videos, and you can see restoration hardware popped that alert and moved on higher, stretched itself out there just a little bit, and is reaching up here for this next resistance target in the chart. So if you're in that trade, you might want to think about peeling some profits out um, watching this resistance up here coming into play if it can move on higher. But RH looking um, really good overall in the chart. Take a look at Shake Shack. Shake Shack finally making a move after quite a bit of consolidation here, popping up, trying to stretch itself out, move higher here. Shake Shack may have that opportunity to resume its trend here 
looking pretty strong yesterday at the close and um, giving us some opportunity maybe for that upside move. So there's quite a few good looking charts out there, but we wanna be really careful around these earnings reports. And um, these earnings reports um, can certainly create lots of price volatility like we saw here in OKTA. Just that ugly selling candle that came into play and now we'll have to wait and see what happens here. Now there are charts trying to come up that look pretty decent here uh, trying to break these little sideways downtrends. BSX had a nice bullish action in it yesterday pushing up off of this price support right here. If that can hold above this downtrend, we might resume this trend here in BSX. Keep an eye on that chart. Looking pretty decent. Um, just a little bit of a little bit of hesitation there uh, might be in order, but overall looks pretty darn good. Um, let's see. I had mentioned um, several charts um, in this pattern that I show all the time um, where we get this these nice tight consolidation areas. Yeti was one of those and Yeti moved up out of that really really strongly. B BBY moved up out of that pattern very strongly. So you guys might want to watch that pattern, study that pattern a little bit. We call that a pullback opportunity. And actually I did a class on the pullback opportunity last night. Um, I will get that video loaded onto YouTube here as soon as I can so everyone can take a look at it. But you might want to take a look at that pullback opportunity trade. It's just such a productive trade. It just works so much in these nice little charts as we hold these trends. So keep an eye on it. Um, very nice pattern to trade and um, one that I would want to encourage everyone to take a look at. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. And I got to tell you that this price action of this market has been very, very challenging. There's no question about that. A lot of back and forth, a lot of uh, just the bulls and bears kind of duking it out. We, we whip higher, we whip lower. So if you're finding yourself being very challenged by this, um, you're not alone. Even very experienced traders are finding this price action pretty darn challenging. What I would suggest is when that occurs, back off from your trading a little bit. Step back, take a breath, be really cognizant of what's going on in the market. Remember, we don't have to trade every single day to be um, successful as traders. As a matter of fact, um, during this last month, I have traded fewer trades than I've traded in a long time, but I'm holding some trades for a longer period. And that's been paying off huge for me um, this month. Um, just not being quite so active, not getting caught in those um, r radical swings, but finding a couple of good um, well, more than a couple, but some really good trending charts and just holding on to them has been very, very um, productive for me. So keep that in mind. We don't have to make a trade every day. And in light of the FOMC and in light of all of these earnings coming in, it may be a wise thing to just stand back a little bit, protect your capital. You know, when this is over, the market's still going to be here and there's going to be great trade showing up. We don't have to risk our capital during these massive news events and try to speculate around it. So be really careful, guys, um, on that. I, I just, I have a heart for traders and I just hate seeing them lose their money um, in this um, rush to get involved in all of this drama that unfolds in the market during these newsy times. Um, so just, just think about that. Consider protecting that capital a little bit. You know, if you if you've been putting something off, um, take your wife to lunch, go to a movie, um, go fishing, do something like that. Play with the grandkids. We don't have to trade every day. And in days like this, um, sometimes the best trades are those that just protect your capital. Remember, cash is a position. You do not have to put massive risk into days like this that could prove to have tremendous volatility. 
All right. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all the very best. I want to wish you great profits today. I'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. We'll find out what that FOMC has decided and, and try to make um, a, a decision on which way the market is going to react to that. Everyone take care. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.